professional photographer. I mostly do industrial photography for businesses and such, but I also do other types for myself and as art. I love taking pictures of the old architecture in my city and of the surprising wildlife in it. My mom asked if I would be willing to take pictures for my stepsister's wedding to help them save money. She asked me to do it as a gift. She knows that Tina hates me and I pretty much reciprocate. I decided to be the bigger person and agreed. I was there for the makeup and the wedding party getting dressed. I took a ton of pictures throughout the wedding. I prepared a checklist of all the different formals she wanted and made sure I got them all. I did my absolute best. When I got to the reception, there was no place for me to sit. I got there right away to get pictures of the wedding party, the arrival, etc. The wedding party had stopped to use the bathroom and get freshened up. I called my mom to find out where I was meant to sit and eat. She talked to Tina and called me back. She was upset and I could tell. She said that Tina thought that since I was working and not a guest, she didn't have to have a seat and food for me. I thanked my mom for the information and left. I took my boyfriend, my assistant that day, and we went out for dinner, my treat. We'd been on the go for eight hours by then. I turned off my phone. We had a nice night out and saw the new Mad Max movie. Sunday morning, I turned on my phone. It was full of messages asking where I went, demanding I come to take pictures and cursing me out. I called my mom to see what was up. She said that Tina was very upset that I left and that all her reception pictures would be taken with cell phone cameras. She said I should have just gone to get a quick bite at McDonald's and then come back. I told her that I felt terrible and would, of course, give a full refund of what they paid me. Zero dollars. I also said that this was the last straw and that I didn't want to hear crap when I didn't invite Tina to my wedding next year. Tina thinks I'm an idiot and my mom thinks I should have kept the peace. I will drop off a thumb drive with all the pictures and wash my hands of this. No editing, no nothing. Am I the idiot for leaving my stepsister's wedding where I was supposed to be taking pictures? Not the idiot. My girlfriend does wedding photos. I often go along as her helper. Even when we aren't related to the bride and groom, we're always fed. We're usually at a back table away from everyone, which is fine since we have a big bag of stuff to keep away from kids. Your stepsister is the idiot. She played a dumb game and got the prize she deserved. Your mom is a little as well. I know how much my girlfriend charges for a wedding. You gave a very expensive gift to someone you do not like. I enjoyed it when you offered a full refund. I must be honest, I've always wanted to think this quickly on my feet. Offering a full refund for a free photography job is just a chef's kiss. It's hilarious and perfect. She's lucky she's getting the thumb drive. Maybe add one more last picture of you and hubby smiling and waving to it. You're doing an epic failure you'd normally get paid well to do. You're doing this for someone who doesn't like you. Then you find out that they intentionally snubbed you. Even if the photographer didn't have seating and food, the stepsister should have that. It was intentional. You left after being snubbed. I would have done the same thing. If they scream, then you could just say, what's it say in the contract? And that should end it. Ha. Huh. Yeah, if there's no seat, then there's no invitation. You don't give gifts for weddings you're not invited for, so why would OP be taking pictures? OP, you should have gone completely without contact with Tina a long time ago if you didn't have any type of relationship with her. Considering that Tina didn't even consider her own stepsister a guest and treated you like a temp employee, you had every right to walk out of this wedding. From here on, do not include Tina in your life ever again. My wife's parents live far away but often come to visit. My father-in-law is not a handyman but he likes to do small house projects for my wife when he visits. In the past, when he visits, he's gotten frustrated by not being able to find my tools, like screwdrivers and vice grips, because they were not put back away properly after I used them. This is a legitimate complaint as I sometimes get very frustrated by myself. I have a bit of attentiveness ADHD and I often lose tools immediately when I put them down after or even during a project. I try to work on it, but it's a constant struggle for me. A few weeks back, I noticed a new toolbox in our basement with a combination lock on it. At first, my wife told me it was hers, but later I learned that my father-in-law had gotten some second-hand tools and sent them to my house so he could work on my wife's projects. The lock is there specifically to prevent me from opening the toolbox and using the tools. My wife knows the code, or at least she did at one point. She says that she's forgotten it, and I believe her on that point. There was never any point where anyone explained to me that he was sending tools and or wanted them to be kept for his own use on projects. They just all decided to send this toolbox with a lock to keep me out. 
I should mention that my wife's parents really love their daughter more than anything in the world and are of the idea that she should make all the decisions and I should just do whatever she tells me. I don't really begrudge their view, but I think this provides some context for it. My initial response was to joke about it, but I'm not really comfortable with this. I appreciate his concerns and I'm comfortable saying I won't use his tools, even if I can't find my own. But having a lock there solely to keep me out of a toolbox in my own home feels very disrespectful. I've expressed these feelings, but both my mother and father-in-law have told me to get over it, which I think is not an acceptable response. I'm trying to avoid confrontation and or bad feelings or blow this out of proportion. I don't want him to feel unwelcome or that his handiwork isn't appreciated, but I feel that this lock has to go. Either it needs to be removed or the whole toolbox has to be shipped back to my father-in-law's house. So, am I the idiot if I tell my father-in-law that they can't keep a toolbox locked to keep me out in my house? You are the idiot. You know you would eventually borrow something you need and lose it. It's not hurting you being there. Get over it. This is not a hill to die on. Just let it go. This is on the level of, why does my teenage daughter have a lock on her diary? Doesn't she trust me? In terms of picking things to be mad at, just let it go. Perfect analogy. OP, why does anyone have to talk to you about it? Is your wife not allowed to store something for her father in the basement? Does she not have the freedom to put what she wants down there? It's not your toolbox, so you don't need to access it anyway. What if you offered a friend to store their bike there? Would you be offended if they put a lock on the tires? If you're not really going to open the toolbox and it's not yours, why do you care whether it's locked or not? I also have ADHD, and I suspect OP is downplaying a bit about the issues he's causing for his wife and in-laws when they can't find the things they need. I doubt it came to this over one hammer or whatever. That aside, there's also the point at which OP frankly doesn't have the right to demand access to everything that doesn't belong to him, even if it's in his home. You don't get to have access to your guest's luggage either. Feel free to throw a sulk about it, but it doesn't change anything. This only makes his life easier. He has a free handyman. I have three kids, 27, 29 and 31. They all decided to go to expensive colleges. I paid for their books and gave them money for a food plan, but tuition was on them. They knew from the beginning that college would be on them. My youngest took some community college classes to save money. The rest of the kids didn't do much to lower their expenses. They're all out of college and in a whole bunch of debt. My mother passed away and she gave me the house. I'm selling it for around $500,000. I plan to use some of it for a big vacation and the rest to go into my retirement fund. I decided to let the kids have a look at the home first before it went on the market. It's a really nice area and the house is great. They were surprised by the amount and all of them couldn't afford it. I told them I planned to sell it soon. This started an argument about how I came into so much money, but don't plan to give them any of it. I told them it was my inheritance from my mother. She wanted me to have this argument escalated even more and they want me to pay off their school debt if i did that it would take three quarters of my inheritance so i told them no i reminded them that when i die they will have their own inheritance from me but i'm not dead yet i can't sell our home and give them that money since i need to live in it i can't drain my retirement fund since i need it to retire they're angry at me am i the idiot not the idiot if your mother wanted them to have money she would have put it in her will you told them that they would have to pay for their own tuition. They're adults. You provided for them when they were children, but they chose to attend their schools and accepted that it would put them in debt. So, question. What was the point of, I let them see the house, when A. They got nothing out of it, other than looking at a nice house that would never be theirs because you're selling it, and B. What was the point, especially in letting them know the sell amount when you know off the top that you wouldn't share or want to have this conversation? This story just reads weird. You're not the idiot for the title because, again, it is your money. You are the idiot when it comes to life lessons because in situations like this, you will always be recommended to just cash out and keep quiet because people will obviously ask, justified or not. Sharing and then being confused that the expectation is that you're willing is what will get you in this situation. So in the future, you probably should keep to yourself. Yeah, I think it's so weird that OP is getting $500,000 and sharing $0 with their kids, whom they presumably love and want to see do well in life. There is a huge space between give away 75% of my inheritance to fully pay off all debt and give them nothing. It was poor judgment to advertise this inheritance if he has no plans to share anything with his children. And there's still time to give them something, say 10000 each as a gift to share the generosity.
I can't decide if I should feel guilty about this or just be angry. Tending toward anger right now, but I need a reality check, especially because I'm not a parent. My husband and I are in our late 30s. My family doesn't care about me being child-free, but my husband's family has asked pointedly about time running out a few times. My husband is a really sweet man who actually loves kids, and even I find them endearing most of the time, but we don't think parenting is worth it for us. We have cats. My sister-in-law has two kids, a pre-tween and a tween. They're staying with us for a week because they want to visit our city for vacation. We have a bookcase of keepsakes in the living room. We have flowers from our wedding in resin. I have my granddad's coin collection. We have trinkets from trips we've been on and other things like this. Two shelves worth of stuff. None of it is worth any money, just very sentimental. Well, today I noticed two things missing. Our wedding flower and a bracelet from my middle school friend. Obviously, I kind of freaked out and I asked my sister if she had any idea. Her kids were also there and they looked a little odd, so I asked them if they knew anything. They said no, but they looked upset. Sister-in-law got mad and said I can't accuse her kids of anything. I insisted on looking in their room and I found the things. I asked the kids why they took them and they said they looked cool. I was really mad, but my sister-in-law told them to go down. She told me not to make such a big deal and the kids were scared. I said kids like this are why we're child-free. She said I crossed the line. I think the kids heard too because they were probably hanging around upstairs and trying to listen in, but I truly didn't mean for them to hear. My husband says I'm right because since we got the stuff back, I could have let it go and not drag him into it. They were staying at your house for a week as guests because they wanted to visit your city for a vacation. Your sister-in-law doesn't get to get mad at you, her host, and she doesn't get to tell you not to make a big deal out of her children stealing your stuff because it looked cool. What the heck? If she's displeased with your hospitality for any reason, there are hotels and Airbnbs. Your really sweet husband, by the way, does not get to complain at you for dragging him into it. It's his family, that's why they were staying in your home. Saying that you're child-free because there are children like your sister-in-laws out there doesn't even rise to the level of an awful thing to say. If ever there was something not to make such a big deal about, this quip is it. You are not the idiot, and maybe they won't impose on your hospitality again, although I'd be surprised. Why is your sister-in-law not concerned that her children are liars and thieves? My kid absolutely knew better way younger than that. Where's the parenting? Gee, I wonder where her kids learn their manners. OP, the most important question is, have you kicked your sister-in-law and her pet thieves out of your house? Generally, I say that parents must deal with their own kids and should be allowed to do that. But the mother's response here was that you weren't allowed to accuse her kids. 99% of the blame is on your sister-in-law rather than the children here. This means she should be kicked out. My sister Lainey lived with my family for her first year of university. We didn't charge her anything. In return, she was supposed to help around the house and babysit for us when we needed. It was a maximum of two weeknights and one day and night on the weekend. It worked great until it didn't. After her first semester, she decided it was unfair and started refusing to do it. Our kids aren't in diapers and are pretty self-sufficient. We just needed an adult to make sure they were okay. We talked to my mom and dad about it and they said she deserved a social life. My wife has a lot of family and friends who send their kids to the States for an education. So we arranged to get one of her cousins to stay with us. My sister moved out to go home for the summer. My wife's family friend moved in. We told my parents about it so they could arrange for my sister to stay in dorms or rent an apartment with friends. They understood. My sister has gone nuts, however. She's upset that I gave away her room, which she didn't pay for, and that came with free food, internet, utilities, and access to a car if she needed it. She thinks we're being vindictive. I think we had a deal and she and our parents tried to change it. Maria, the girl staying with us, has been great. She tutors the kids and we have to tell her to stop cleaning because we have a cleaning lady. Maria gets four nights a week to herself and one weekend day, the exact same as my sister. We're helping her get a license so she can drive the kids if she needs to. We will also give her access to a car if we aren't using it. My sister is upset because she was going to use the money from her summer job as fun money for the year and now she'll have to use it for housing, transportation and food. She will also need a job during the school year, impacting her social life. I tried talking to her about it, but she said I was being unfair and cheap. If we pretend we were paying her $25 an hour, that would be 16 hours times $25 times 4 weeks, $1,600 a month. Rent, all utilities, food, 
and access to a car for $1,600 is pretty good in our city. Dorms plus a meal plan will be more this fall. My parents are staying out of it. Dude, they aren't. They screwed over your sister with their attitudes when she was naive and a bit spoiled. Sure, it's nice for college kids to have a social life, and she could have had one during the time she had off. They sided with her, so she blew you guys off, but they aren't willing or able to help her at all now that they've helped ensure she lost a cushy deal. Yes, she's getting FAFO, but your parents are at least equally to blame for this as they're grown adults and she's a college student. Not the idiot for you, however. Sounds as if they thought they could push OP into giving up to keep the peace, only for OP to drop the bomb of actually pushing the sister out. Now, the parents are likely stuck with making up the financial difference and are justifiably worried that if they stick their nose in again, then OP might go low contact. A classic screw around and find out with OP's parents terrified of what other find out could be around the next bend if they were to screw around more. Your sister is an adult now and needs to understand how money works and where it goes. If she spends her first few years of adulthood blowing all her money on fun things, she's going to have bad financial habits once she actually needs to pay for things on her own. She neglected her responsibilities, didn't uphold her end of the bargain, and now she's on her own. 